Okay, uh, the next video of the, the set here, which really pairs off with ideology, is science as a belief system. Now this is page 10 and 11 within our textbook. Now, what we're going to start off with is August Comte and the stages of human development. Now, some sociologists have argued that science is quite different um, type of belief system to political ideologies and religion. So, for example, the functionist socialist August Comte, who is a positivist, um, saw society as passing through three stages progressing towards scientific knowledge. And we're going to look at those three stages now. Obviously, if you want to read these in a bit more detail, pause the um, video and you'll be able to see so. Now, the first stage by which Comte really proposes here is the theological state, which is the pre-18th century. Now, the characteristics or, of beliefs within this particular phase are the following. Now, religious and superstitious beliefs are dominant. Um, people believe because they have faith, they follow beliefs from sacred texts and religious leaders. Beliefs are not open to question or debate. So this is something by which you're really fixed within your current belief system. This would really be predate or go towards early Christian societies by which individuals would not question what the Bible says, meaning they would accept it wholeheartedly. The next one we're going to look at is the metaphysical stage, which is the 18th century. Now, this is f philosophical beliefs are dominant. People can now use rationality to decide what to believe and how to behave. So, for example, political philosophy led to the introduction of democracy rather than believing that kings and queens should rule by divine right. This is really the first stage by which we see humans starting to question, starting to question the legitimacy of people claiming to have God-given rights and abilities. The next stage and the last stage of Comte's proposed stages of human development is the positive stage. Now this is the 19th century onwards, seemingly we should be in this by now. Now science is a dominant belief system People believe those things can be tested and proved to be true using objective knowledge. Now, beliefs are no longer a matter of opinion. Instead, they are a matter, matter of objective, scientific, rational thought. Now, if you can use August Comte anywhere, you can use Comte as a introduction, in a sense, to how science has replaced religion as an ideological influence in society, therefore providing you with a good discussion which provides a feasible argument throughout your essay. Now, from Comp's point of view, scientific beliefs are fundamentally different from other types of belief. They are not a matter of opinion, as scientific facts are independent of beliefs of individuals. Unlike religion, science does not rely upon faith, but upon evidence. So scientific knowledge can be tested through research and false beliefs can be rejected. A move towards a scientific belief system represents progress as a result because we are now removing um, the mystical nature of religion and really starting to try to understand how the world works and why the world works in that particular way. Obviously, as a result, challenging the mainstream meta-narratives that currently exist. Now, we're moving on to positivism and science here. Now, Comte advocated positivism as an objective scientific way of producing knowledge. He believed that this approach could be applied to social sciences, such as sociology, as well as physical sciences, such as chemistry, biology, physics, etc. Now, he believed that there are eight main features of positivism when experiencing the world. Now the first of the main eight features here are there are objective social facts about the social world. These facts can be expressed in statistics which would be seemingly objective and quantifiable. Now these facts are not influenced by the researcher's personal opinion or subjective viewpoint or the beliefs about right and wrong values are therefore value free meaning that they are not based in the individual's point of view, they are based within objective scientific understanding. Now, obviously, the counterpoint here is if, it were, if the beliefs were value-laden beliefs, they would be influenced by the moral principles of an individual and at least they'll be partly subjective. So they're based on personal opinion and not biased truth. 
Um, so therefore, what we can see here is if we are expressing data in these particular ways, it is objective. Um, next bit, you can look for correlations, so patterns in which two or more things tend to occur together. Now, with the correlations, they may represent causal relationships, um, so one thing causing another. Now, it is possible to discover laws of human behavior as a result of this. So causes of behavior which are true for all humans everywhere and throughout history, just as though the laws are in science. Now, human behavior is also shaped by external stimuli. So these are things that happen to us. So our experiences within the social world, etc., rather than internal stimuli, which goes on in the human mind. Now, to be scientific, you should only study what you can observe. So we must not make inferences based off of unobservable information. It is therefore unscientific to study people's emotions, meanings, or motives, which are internal to the unobservable mind. Last point is scientific knowledge is produced through induction. You collect evidence and induce a theory from the evidence, rather than deduction where you come up with a theory and you try to find evidence to support what you're looking at. Now, the main thing that you can throw in as a bit of a evaluation point here is positivism is not a university accepted as a model of science. Now, if anything, when we started to look at Popper and falsification, this is really where the magic starts to happen because he is a lot more widely accepted across a multitude of fields. Now, the next section we're gonna move on to is Cole Popper, falsification and science. Now, Cole Popper offers an alternative view of science's belief system. And this is really put forward just to counterbalance what Comte was stating about social science. Now, he believed that social science, unlike religion, can be objective. However, unlike Comte, he did not believe it could produce laws that would necessarily be true for all time. Now, he saw all sciences based on falsifiable theories, which made precise predictions that could then be tested and be proven or disproven as a result of this. Now, if repeated, uh, repeatedly tested and found to be correct, a theory may be provisionally accepted, but there is always the possibility that it can be proved wrong or falsified in the future. Now, Popper believed that sociology could be objective if it made precise predictions that could be falsified. However, he regarded some sociological, sociological arguments, such as Marxism, as unscientific because it did not include precise predictions. For example, Marx did not produce precise predictions about when the proletariat revolution would have taken place, as well as that he did not conduct any objective research to find out why or when this revolution would be taking place as a result. Now, Popper used the dedu deductive approach, so from the theory, you deduce hypothesis and make precise predictions. Then check that these are correct. This is unlike the induct in inductive approach of positivism, which induces theories from the data collected. Both Popper and positivists see scientific belief systems as superior to other belief systems. However, positivists see science as producing objective truth. Whilst Popper saw science as getting as close as possible to the truth, although it was always possible that a theory would be falsified in the future, meaning that it can be proven wrong and right in the possible near future. Now, the main thing that you really need to note about this is Popper did not see science as ideological. He saw it as a genuine search for the truth. However, he argued that social scientists need to make more precise predictions and be careful to make, make their theories falsifiable if they were to be seen as scientific as a result. Now we're gonna look at science in social context. Now some sociologists did not see science as being objective in the way um, believed by positivists and Popper. Instead, they argue that science is a belief system like any other that is influenced and shaped by society in which beliefs are produced. Now, the example that we've got here is Charles Darwin and evolution. Now, Roger Gomm argues that Darwin's theory of evolution was accepted because of 
the social context of Victorian Britain with its laissez-faire capitalism. It welcomed the ideas of natural selection and survival of the fittest. Now, opposition to social revolution encouraged acceptance of evolutionary theory and of fossil evidence because evolutionary thinking allowed Victorian Britons to see themselves as superior to the people in conquered colonies. Therefore, they are the ones that are going to succeed and dominate societies due to them being the fittest as a result. Now, as well as being influenced by the broad social context, scientific knowledge can be influenced by the desires of scientists to have successful careers. This means scientists may not always be objective. And a perfect example of this is Kaplan, who distinguishes between reconstructed log logics, so the methods of scientists claim to use, and logic in use, the actual method they use. Meaning that there's going to be this disparity between these two types of logics by which a scientist will fail to reconcile. Now, Michael Lynch in 1983 illustrated this further by showing how scientists, sorry, there's a police car going past, um, how scientists studying rat brains ignored slides that contradicted their theories, dismissing them as artifacts or mistakes produced during laboratory procedures. He argued that scientists look for evidence to confirm theories and ignore evidence that may might falsify them. They are reluctant to accept evidence that may undermine their work because remember they have spent a lot of time nurturing and they've got this little bit of an emotional connection with any form of research by which they have conducted. Now, Thomas Kuhn, in terms of the scientific revolutions, really starts to bring this all to life. Now, he questioned the idea that science is objective. He believed that science operates through paradigms, so these are generally general theories or sets of beliefs held by groups of scientists. Now, each scientific paradigm has a social base of scientists who are dedicating, dedicating their careers to working within it. Now, scientists tend to work within a single paradigm, ignoring evidence that contradicts it or does not fit with the theory. Only when many inexplic inexplicable anomalies are found does the scientific revolution take place and the paradigm is replaced by a new one. An example of this is the replacement of Sir Isaac Newton's views of physics with Albert Einstein's theory of relativity. So we can see that it can change and it is constantly shifting as a result. So we will enter into this normal science phase and then a revolution will take part. Next section and the last little bit um, for science and ideology. Now, postmodernism and science here. Now, Latoyard in 1984 believed that science is just another meta-narrative or big story about the world with no more validity than other meta-narratives. He argued, therefore, science is not different in any kind from any other kind of belief system, including religion. Now, different belief systems are accepted in different societies and at different stages in history, and no one belief system is superior to the others. Now, according to Latoyard, science involves a meta-narrative of progress, suggesting that humans can control and perfect the world. Now, this allows us to be underneath the assumption that at some point through our own manifestation we'll be able to enter and create the golden age of man because we've got the scientific knowledge we've got the technological advancements which then therefore may enable us to reach that big point within our lives within humanity now this view became more influential from the 18th century onwards although it never completely replaced religion However, in the modern era, the meta-narrative of progress came to dominate Western thought. Then, in recent decades, modernity has been replaced by post-modernity. Now, in post-modernity, people became, become sceptical of all meta-narratives that tell them what is right and what is wrong, and they tell them how to live their lives. Now, science has become discredited because it's failed to solve problems such as cancer, famine, war, etc., and it and it has been used to create new problems as well in our society, such as nuclear weapons and global warming, which we just do not need and they are detrimental to the survival of the human race as well. Now, science consists of two types of games, 
one being the denotative language games, which are based upon whether statements are true or not. Now, denotative language games have been replaced by technical language games, which concern with whether things are useful rather than whether they are true. So there's going to be a big criticism between these two different types of games by which people may play in terms of their statements and wordplay. Now, people may therefore no longer seek the truth from one single belief system. Instead, they can pick and choose from a variety of different belief systems. This is where the idea of spiritual shopping really comes into play. And we're going to look at this in a bit more detail on the next slide. Now, I'd really recommend that you take a minute and pause this video just to read what's on this slide. Now, first one we've got here is scientific beliefs. So, beliefs in previous eras. So, in modern era, scientific knowledge was accepted as objective truth. However, in post-modernity, science is seen as just one amongst many possible truths, e.g. people use alternative thera therapies as well as traditional scientific medicine to try remedy any illnesses or um, mental ill health that they may experience. Political beliefs, so political ideologies such as communism and fascism, had a powerful influence in modern societies. Now, in postmodernity, people reject single political meta narratives but may be interested in single issue politics. So, for example, ecology, human rights, or the rights of minority groups. Therefore, people are more focused around their own individual, individual experiences than that of their community. Religious beliefs. Now, religion was dominant in pre-modern societies and most people still believe in one of the dominant world religions in the modern era. However, in post-modernity, people no longer follow a single religion, but pick and choose from a variety of beliefs in the New Age movements, sects and cults. Therefore, what we see is that pick and mix culture really is starting to emerge as a result. Now, just to conclude, so most sociologists agree um, that the degree of faith in science is influenced by social factors. However, as science allows belief to be tested against evidence, the scientific beliefs that withstand testing are seen as objective truths. However, the extent to which science has lost influence can be exaggerated. So, for example, most people still rely upon scientifically based healthcare and technology is integral to people's lives now. Although people may be more sceptical about science, than they were in the past. So therefore, we're not placing our faith wholeheartedly within these scientific belief systems anymore. We're now venturing out and exploring the world by ourselves, trying to gain a deeper understanding as to what is going on within our modern world. Now, that's the video for in terms of belief systems and ideology. If you've got any questions, let me know.